we live in interesting times, and the, the, the news media are doing a good job uh, managing the news. Uh, not very many people know that this Supreme Court case, which invalidated the California law requiring that nonprofit groups turn into the state government the list of their major donors. This suit was originally, originally it had Kamala Harris's name on it. She was the attorney general at the time. Uh, and uh, this six to three decision eliminating that requirement of disclosure of, of donor information, uh, which has to be given to the federal government, but, but obviously now does not have to be given to the state government. And California certainly didn't deserve that because notoriously such information has been leaked out by California officials and nobody not even Kamala Harris has been held accountable for. But it's, it's a piece of managed news uh, that uh, conservatives largely know about it because it's in the conservative media, but it hasn't appeared as far as I know in the mainstream media. I encourage you all to live tweet today's event uh, uh, with hashtag WWCB. That stands for Wednesday Wake Up Club Breakfast. In 2021, your Leadership Institute has already trained 6,033 conservatives at 218 individual training programs. Since 1979, the Institute's founding, the Institute has trained 236,758 activists, students, and leaders. At the end of this event, you will be redirected to the training schedule on the Leadership Institute website. There you will find all of the currently scheduled trainings. And I urge you to take a moment then to review these schools and consider attending one or sending a friend to the training. If you are joining us over Zoom, there will be a chance to ask questions at the end of the talk. I urge you to use the Zoom Q&A function, which appears at the bottom of your screen to submit a question uh, to our speaker, should you have one. Kate Herschel is the correspondent director for the Leadership Institute's campus reform website. In this role, she oversees the recruitment and management of uh, our campus correspondents, recruits students for media interviews, and runs the administrative functions of campus reform. Before joining LI, Kate was a field director for Trump Victory and Peter Magier uh, for Congress in Michigan. With majors in economics and political science, she graduated from Albion College in Michigan. Um, Kate? Yes, thank you, Martin. As correspondent director of campus reform, I have seen firsthand how prevalent liberal bias and abuse is on our college campuses. I'm concerned each and every day by these stories, but the work we do at campus reform is a crucial step in exposing the reality of our higher education. For example, this past month, a professor at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington, posted, it, posted on his social media, blow up Republicans. And the story was brought to our attention by a student who is part of the Allies student network and campus reform was the first to report the story. Following our first article, a board of trustees member called for an investigation based on the campus reform rep report into the professor and the university condemned the statement. Campus reform also put a UNCW professor or UNC, UNCW campus correspondent on Fox Business and the professor issued a public apology hours after the interview. The fight is not over at UNCW, nor is it over at any college campus, but this is just one of the many examples where campus reform has brought national attention to liberal bias occurring on college campuses. 
the Leadership Institute will continue to fight for college students and have their voices heard. Thank you for having me on. Thank you very much, Kate. Campus reform has become an invaluable project of the Leadership Institute. The work campus reform does is crucial to protect students on college campuses against leftist abuses and bias, and the Leadership Institute's generous and steadfast donors make this all possible. David Horowitz is the best-selling author of The Enemy Within. He is founder and president of a think tank, the David Horowitz Freedom Center, editor of the, Senators, of, the, of the Center's publication and front page magazine, and director of Discover the Networks, a website that tracks individuals and groups on the political left. Mr. Horowitz also founded the organization Students for Academic Freedom. From 1956 to 1975, Harwitz was a devout activist of the New Left. More than that, he was a leader of the New Left. And he later rejected leftist ideas and actions and became a defender of conservative principles. Harwitz recounted his ideological journey in a series of retrospective books culminating with his 1996 memoir, Radical Son, A Generational Odyssey. This work was described as, quote, the first great autobiography of his generation. His other books are Politics of Bad Faith, Hating Whitey, Leftist Illusions, The Party of Defeat, Unlikely Alliance, Uncivil Wars, The Professors, the most, the 101 most dangerous academics in America. Yeah, in, indoctrination, you, one party classroom and reforming our universities. His book, The Art of Political War was described as quote, the perfect guide to winning on the political battlefield. Harwich has spoken at over 300 colleges and universities. He appears on countless TV news shows and gives hundreds of interviews yearly on radio and television. I encourage you again to ask questions using the Zoom Q&A function throughout Mr. Horowitz's talk and he will have time to answer some at the end. And I present to you my friend now of many years, David Horowitz. Thank you, Morton. Morton and I go back 33 years, actually. Uh, and I want to say I have watched from a distance and admired the work that Morton has done with the Leadership Institute. I've watched the organization grow uh, and grow aggressive, too. We're in a very dark hour in our country and could lose it very shortly. Uh, it requires people willing to fight and willing to take the wounds that you incur uh, in a fight. And the Leadership Institute is one of the most uh, important uh, institutions of the right uh, to save our country. Um, my book is subtitled, the book is called The Enemy Within and the subtitle is How a Totalitarian Movement is Destroying America. The Democrat Party is no longer a liberal party. It's no longer an American party. Uh, the left uh, infiltrated, began infiltrating the Democrat Party. But when I, the left that I came out of, which I left that left when I realized it was not about justice or peace or helping black people or poor people. It was about hating America and destroying it. Um, uh, I left the left about 40 years ago, but the left marched into the Democrat Party um, uh, and uh, essentially has taken it over. Barack Obama came out of the 60s left. He came from the same roots I did. We were both raised by communists. His entire career before um, he 
reached the U.S. Senate uh, was orchestrated by the communist left. Uh, and the difference between us is that when I found out that I was part of an evil movement that wanted to destroy a great country, um, I, I, the first thing I wanted to do was to warn Americans who were very well-meaning, tolerant, willing to give people the benefit of the doubt that these people are very dangerous. Um, it, it took the election of Barack Obama to convince conservatives that something near to what I was saying was, was accurate. Uh, Obama never left the left. Obama is, a, is I mean, it, his most significant achievements are giving a path to nuclear weapons to our mortal enemy, Iran, um, and stoking the race wars uh, by saying, starting with his statement about Trayvon Martin, that if he had a son, he would look like Trayvon, as, uh, implying, uh, as he did uh, in many speeches afterwards, that Blacks were hunted in America. The opposite is actually the case, as I will get into it in a moment. Um, the Democrat Party today is an anti-American party. Uh, who, what president who loved his country would blow up the southern border in the midst of a global pandemic and let in, well, if, if there's a million illegals, they're now saying it's going to be two million. Uh, who cross the borders, and 10% of them uh, are COVID already infected with the virus. That means letting in 100 to 200,000 coronavirus carriers. Uh, and this from a man who during the campaign blamed Trump for every coronavirus death. Uh, the Democrat Party is, a, is an evil party. Uh, the uh, when Biden came into office, and I won't go into all, all the irregularities of the 2020 election, nobody in his right mind could say there's no evidence of fraud in the 2020 election. But in his first statement it was from Black Lives Matter, uh, a criminal organization led by Marxists who hate America and support the terrorists who want to destroy us. Uh, this Joe Biden, in his first statement, said, every aspect, systemic racism touches every aspect of American life, which is a monstrous lie. There is no systemic racism in America. How do I know that? Because, because systemic racism was explicitly outlawed by the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Uh, it just outlaws institutional racism in those terms. So if, let's just take the police departments. There are 18,000 police departments. If there was systemic racism in any one of them, let alone in the hundreds, there would be massive lawsuits. Even if you think the way Democrats seem to think that all white people are racist by their skin color. There are thousands, thousands of black uh, lawyers, thousands of black district attorneys. Well, I don't know about thousands, but there are a ton of dist black district attorneys, black attorneys general, black police chiefs, black mayors, black city council members, black state uh, government uh, assemblymen and senators, uh, and, and black members of Congress. So, so there would be a tsunami of lawsuits and billions of dollars would have to be paid in penalties if there was anything like systemic racism. There is no systemic racism. There is actually one a national program which is systemically racist. It's called affirmative action. And because systemic racism is outlawed by the Civil Rights Act, they had to get a pass from the Supreme Court in the Bakke decision uh, that the affirmative program, uh, action programs were exempted from the law. And that was the Supreme Court's, well, it was the recognition of everybody 
uh, that singling out people on the basis of their skin color and giving them privileges that are denied to others uh, is racism. The Biden administration is a pure, it's actually the first overt racist administration in the history of our country. And it's uh, the, the term they use uh, to carry on their racist policies is called is equity. For Democrats, uh, there are two key terms. One is disparity and the other is equity. Disparity is if you take the aggregate number, the total number of black people and look at their incomes and compare them to white people and look at their incomes. Or, um, and there's a disparity that blacks are, are, have lower incomes. That's because of racism and no such thing. If you're a drug addict, you're not gonna, well, if you're a drug dealer, you probably earn more money. But uh, if you're raised in a single parent family, for example, the statistics show that you're five to six times, times more likely uh, to be poor than if you're born to a two parent family, regardless of race or any other circumstance. If you go to uh, get a high school degree and get married, you will not be poor. That's what the statistics show. And what that tells you is that the disparity in income, uh, the reason Blacks have lower incomes, um, has nothing to do with race and everything to do with uh, behavior. One thing that characterizes all people on the left is they want to erase individuals uh, and their accountability. They don't want to hold individuals accountable for their choices. Uh, they like to just blanket it with these abstractions like race. Uh, there's a great difference between the Hispanic refugees from Cuba and the Hispanics from uh, Mexico or Puerto Rico uh, in great income disparities, even though uh, ethnically, um, they're from the same groups. 80%, well, let me put it the reverse way. Only 20% of Blacks, I mean, this shouldn't be the case, but it is, 20% of Blacks uh, live in poverty, are below the poverty line, 20%. So if racism determined the fact that they uh, were in poverty, how do you explain the 80% of black Americans who are not impoverished. Some of them are very rich billionaires, in fact. Um, many of them are in the middle classes. They are you know, part of America's elite culture. Uh, the left says that black people in America are oppressed because they are marginalized. Does anybody in his right mind, if they actually think about it, think that black people are marginalized in America? Black people are the center of attention. They're the beneficiaries of the lion's share of the government doled out privileges based on skin color or, uh, or ethnicity. Uh, you know, I mean, affirmative action puts them at the head of the line uh, to get into colleges, uh, allows them to have a disparity of uh, 200 points on SATs, that is in the actual skills that are required to succeed in college. Um, you know, you could go on and on. You go, go to the head of the line and get a job. Our culture is, our, the popular culture which shapes public consciousness. I, I mean, this is a, a great tribute to this country. It's dominated in a way by Blacks. Black athletes are the icons of our youth. Uh, black entertain. you know, I, I don't have to go on. I think everybody can see it. You, you, you look at advertisements on TV um, I, you know, so well over 60% of them feature black actors and, and black characters. Uh, the spokesman like State Farm replaced its white company spokesman with, with a, a, you know, very appealing black man. But, you know, let's recognize what this country has done for black people. I'll sum it up in a sentence or two. Black people in America are the richest most privileged, uh, freest, 
uh, most culturally powerful blacks in the entire world, including all of black Africa and the black West Indies. America has been a great gift to black people as it has for all of us who are, came here or whose ancestors came here as immigrants. Um, the American founding is under attack from the Democrat party uh, in, in the form of the 1619 project, but you know, also critical race theory. Uh, we were founded by racists. The constitution is racist. The words black and white do not appear in the constitution because the founders believed in the kind of egalitarian society that we finally achieved. It's extremely difficult to change social institutions and social attitudes, but America has miraculously done that through great struggles and great sacrifices. And yet at this hour, uh, when, when American blacks are the most privileged blacks in the world and equal in privileges to white people. And yeah, let me put it another way. Who's the richest ethnic group in America? It's not white people, it's Asians. White people are actually ninth on the list. Uh, the, I, I think the statistics for Asian Americans is that they make $20,000 a year more average, on average than white people. If white supremacy were anything but a, a slur against America, uh, white people would be the richest people, wouldn't they? But they're not. Um, the, the founding, I, I want to just say a word about the founding. The reality of the founding, I mean, these illiterates, Nicole Hannah-Jones is an illiterate racist who is responsible for the um, 1619 project, which says that we weren't founded in 1776, when we obviously were. Um, but in 1619, when allegedly 20 slaves were shipped to the Virginia colony. Well, the Virginia colony was English. It wasn't American, so that's not American, the beginning of American slavery. And the 20 blacks were indentured servants because slavery was outlawed in Virginia at the time. And the majority of the labor force was indentured servants and the majority of those indentured servants were white. Uh, so, so racism had nothing to do with 1619, but you wouldn't know that if you go to Harvard or Yale. Um, the reality of our founding is this. Every black slave shipped to this country was enslaved by black Africans and sold at slave auctions in Africa. Every black in this country who is free owes their freedom to the sacrifice of 350,000 mainly white Union soldier lives in the Civil War and America's the life of America's greatest president. We have a society where people from all over the world of all colors are risking their lives to get in illegally if they can't get in legally because blacks, browns, Asians are so privileged in America. Uh, if there's an original sin of slavery, it belongs to Africa where slavery existed for a thousand years before a white person ever set foot there. Uh, a black America owes a gratitude to white America for freeing them. Uh, and that, <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. The South, of course, was a scene of, of atrocities, segregation, and, you know, I, uh, lynchings. I was just reading a, a book by a black racist named Tamika Mallory about how horrifying lynchings were to her. Her image of the horror image was that of a noose. There were about 4,000 lynchings, about a thousand of them were of white people. Uh, many of them were of 
alleged criminals, uh, you know, a lynch mob uh, is a mob that is impatient with the legal process, kind of like Black Lives Matter. First the verdict and then the trial, oh, but never the trial. Um, that's what a lynch mob is. But, you know, Jews lost 6 million people who were exterminated because they were Jews. And they don't go around attacking America uh, for being, you know, for, for what anti-Semitism, although it's rampant now in this country. Um, I want to say this about, I wrote this book, The Enemy Within, to demonstrate how the Democrat Party has changed. It's a totalitarian party. Its energies are spent on shutting down free speech. The universities are a good example. The, our universities are a disgrace. Uh, if you went to a college, you know that a conservative on a university faculty these days is as rare as a unicorn. Um, that, that's, what, that's, that's the case in dictatorships, in countries that are tyrannies, in communist countries, in fascist countries, that you deal with people who disagree with you by shutting them up, uh, whether it's uh, through prison or, or you know, the cancel culture or taking away their jobs or intimidating them from, from speaking up. That's the state of our universities today. Uh, I spoke at Dartmouth. I mean, I, 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 for 20 years, I couldn't go to a campus without a bodyguard. Um, I, and I, but I, the last campus I spoke at was Dartmouth, and I, the college Republican kids were in the, were history majors mainly. So I asked them, "Is there a course at Dartmouth in the Cold War?" And they said, "Yes, it's taught by a pro-Soviet Marxist." So if you go to Dartmouth and pay sixty thousand a year, you learned uh, that America um, was the villain in the Cold War and the uh, Soviet gulag, they're the heroes. I mean, it's tragic what's happened to our educational system. And I'm really happy to see people in the K-12 schools fighting back, finally. Um, I, I felt like a voice crying in the wilderness for about 20 years. Um, and uh, because conservatives were so well-meaning their attitude was live and let, let live and let live. Uh, and they didn't see the menace in people who don't want you to, they don't want you to let, let to live. They, they will exterminate you if, if it's, if they feel it's necessary to achieve their fantasies of a green new deal or whatever it is, uh, of a utopia of social justice. I, I think anybody steeped in, uh, uh, in the Bible uh, can easily tell you why there will never ever be a world of social justice. Because, because unless, unless, there this, uh, unless a divinity institutes it. Uh, in the story of the Garden of Eden, which was a paradise much better than the Green New Deal, um, there's an angel with a flaming sword keeping people out. You, you can only get to heaven. You can only get to, to a paradise on earth if a Messiah creates it. But the left thinks they can redeem the world. Well, who's the source of injustice in the world? <laughs> it's people. Of course, leftists have already erased people. They only deal in races and patriarchies and giant abstractions where there are no specific details and you can't hold anybody accountable. But the reality is the root cause of all social problems is us. Uh, so if you have a revolutionary movement, all you're doing is empowering the same people who have the same corruptions, the greed, uh, the mendacity uh, uh, in accomplishing their goals that created the injustice in the first place. So there can't be any social justice in this world. Uh, you can only, and I realized this 
as I was leaving the left, that the difference between the left and the right, the left still claims the Rosenberg spies were innocent. Whereas the right had turns against uh, the villains that crop up in its midst. In its midst. The, the conservatives, uh, patriotic Americans will rectify the past. They can't you know, raise the dead, but they can adjust our understanding of what happened. And that, that fact was one of the main causes that I came over into the conservative movement because it had a self-correcting uh, mechanism. The Democrat Party today, and I, I should get back I, uh, to disparity and equity. So Democrats erase individuals. So when individuals are not responsible if they're criminals, an oppressive system made them criminals. Uh, if they're poor, uh, a, an oppressive uh, capitalist economy made them poor, uh, even though most people are not poor, um, and so forth. Um, so that's oppression. To correct oppression, we have equity. Equity is the redistribution of wealth on the basis of race. It's pure racism. And of course, white people are the demons. White people who have given blacks, despite the uh, injustices inflicted on them, principally in the South, but you know, also generally. Uh, and you see, um, by the way, that bigotry is not race specific. There are so many black racists on television these days, uh, as anybody with two eyes can see. Um, and that's because bigotry is an, a disease of all races and has to be constantly fought against. But America is this ingenious creation uh, which has created the institutions to curtail and prevent racism. I think America is the least racist country with large minority populations in the world. Uh, you can think of all the black countries in the world, all the brown countries, all the Asian countries. I don't think one of them has made a, a, a elected a president who comes from an oppressed minority, but America has. And that's the way you need to me measure uh, America's greatness uh, on, on racial issues. Um, now, I, I've been using very strong language here. Uh, and the equity programs, by the way, they're all unconstitutional. Um, uh, Stephen Miller has organized something that I, Stephen used to work for me. Um, and I, I remember discussing this with him that I had always wanted to create a conservative ACLU um, to sue for uh, the patriotic side. Uh, well, he's done that. Uh, it's called the, I think, the Amer America First Legal. Um, and he's suing uh, the Biden administration over these billion dollar giveaways to black farmers because they're black. Uh, but it, it's, it, it, it runs throughout their programs. They have dozens and they'll have hundreds before they're finished of programs uh, that give uh, uh, benefits to every ethnic group, every racial group except white people. The Democrat party is in the business of demonizing white people. And this is a threat. This is the, uh, I, I have, Two, two things I want to say before I turn this over to questions. Um, but the Democrat Party, uh, by demonizing Trump, one thing a democracy can't handle or can't survive is if you demonize the opposition uh, the way the Democrats have Trump. They boycotted his inauguration. They lied for four years of uh, calling him a traitor because of a, a alleged collusion with Russia, which a $35 million investigation couldn't turn up a shred of evidence. Um, 
the left really doesn't uh, care about much about evidence. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but uh, Keith Ellison, who once was a spokesman for the racist Louis Farrakhan and also once chairman of the Democrat Party, and is also the chief prosecutor in Minnesota. So he was the chief prosecutor on the George Floyd case. He was asked that, uh, by 60 Minutes a week after the Derek Chauvin verdict, if there was a racial element in the case. And he said, no, we couldn't, we couldn't find one. So all those riots were about a hoax. Uh, whatever happened to George Floyd had absolutely nothing to do with his race. Um, of course, it's too late to rectify all the damages that were done uh, in behalf of this hoax. Uh, but the Democrat Party, by calling Trump a white supremacist, which is absurd, you know, Trump was known to every American for 30 years before he was uh, ran for president. Uh, nobody ever introduced Donald Trump as he is the host of The Apprentice and a white supremacist. Uh, it was completely invented by Democrats to defeat him. Well, if you, you know, and that, that's only one of the epithets. Of course, the Russia collusion makes him a traitor uh, and so forth. Now, now he's a, an armed insurrectionist. Uh, that's the end of democracy. You, you can't do what a democracy has to do to bring together all these diverse communities and make them one nation for, you know, e pluribus unum. You have to have some respect for people and for their views, however distorted, or you have to treat them publicly that way. Um, but not the Democrats. They demonized Republicans and they, you know, they deplatform Trump. Uh, they've shown in every way that they don't have any respect for the US Constitution. They want to abolish the Electoral College, which is a, an institution that creates compromise in our body politic. Um, they've actually talked about abolishing the Senate because they want one man, one vote, even though the founders distrusted the people. They made them sovereigns, but they also distrusted them. So they in instituted a system of checks and balances to thwart uh, the kind of passions that sweep people up and they stop thinking, which is what's happened to us now. And of course, the Democrats want to undo the checks and balances. They want to pack the Supreme Court and that will be the end of an independent judiciary to be a check on unprincipled le legislators. Um, everything the Democrat Party has done in the last four years show that they hate our democracy and want to replace it with a system uh, based on a racist, racist attitudes and no respect uh, for individuals and no intention of holding individuals accountable for what they do. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, the language I've used is strong, but it, it's accurate. And uh, I, was, I, I actually studied classical Chinese when I was in college. And, but I can't remember whether it was Confucius or Lao Tzu who said, in order to achieve justice, the first thing you have to do is rectify the names. You have to call things by their right names. Right now in the political wars, the Democrats, Nancy Pelosi actually called Republicans enemies of the state. I mean, that's worthy of Putin <laughs> and Xi Jinping enemies of the state. They've called Trump an, an inciter. They tried, they impeached him as an inciter of insurrection because he questioned an election. And the hypocrisy is 
you know, mind blowing. I mean, it's not a character problem for Democrats. It's a problem of people who are radicals and believe that the ends justify the means. Uh, the, the Democrats in 2016 questioned the election. Jamie Raskin, this wretched politician from Maryland who led the Trump impeachment for questioning an election actually led a delegation of uh, Democrat members of Congress to the well of the house to try to decertify the electors in the 2000 election because of this alleged collusion with Russia and overturn the election result. So it's very American to question everything. Um, <laughs> it's kind of our middle name. Um, but the Democrats uh, have made that a treasonous act. So they're actually accusing uh, the people who had a pretty mild demonstration inside the, uh, the Capitol. And, and you notice Republicans reaction is always, oh, it was horrible, it was horrific. The only pe person killed in that demonstration was murdered by a Capitol police officer and was an Air Force veteran named Ashley Babbitt, uh, who was an unarmed, unarmed, unarmed woman. She was just murdered. And Pelosi is protecting the identity of the murderer and the criminal uh, Biden Justice Department. I am so grateful for all of my criticism of Mitch McConnell that he blocked Merrick Garland from being a Supreme Court justice. Um, they, they're not pressing any charges. So, um, What, what, what do we call them and what do they call us? In politics, the weapons are words. And you have Pelosi calling, and it's not just Pelosi, it's the, you know, disgusting people like Swalwell and, and uh, Schiff calling Republicans uh, enemies of the state, traitors, white supremacists, racists, insurrectionists. And Republicans call Democrats liberals. What are they liberal about except hard drugs, sex, spending other people's money, releasing criminals from jail, violent criminals, letting violent criminals cross the border illegally, and aiding and abetting our enemies. Like now they're covering up the Chinese were obviously, actually the first time I heard that the virus was developed in a lab controlled by the Chinese communist military, I said, that's a biological weapon. And of course they dispersed it like a biological weapon and killed 3 million people. And yet the Democrats are trying to cover up the origins of this virus. That tells you who the Democrats are today. I, and there are good Democrat voters, don't get me wrong. And there are probably good Democrats in, you know, members, elected officials, although I would like to see at least one of them stand up and protest these travesties. Um, but th that's who the Democrat party is. We can't win a battle if we call them liberals and they are calling us traitors. Uh, politics, is ugly and dirty and conservatives are very civilized people. That's a big problem. And I often say in my talks that uh, I feel somewhat guilty as a former radical who was sent to teach Republicans bad manners. But you have to get close to what their reality is when you're confronting them. They're hypocrites, they're, they lie about everything. I mean, it's really unbelievable the brazenness of their lying. And you need to call them out for that. And they're not patriots. I mean, Antifa is defended by the Democrat party. They celebrated July 4th by having a bonfire of American flags. I mean, Cory Bush celebrated July 4th by attacking the Declaration of Independence and <laughs> claiming that the American Revolution was to defend slavery. I mean, this is idiocy. 
uh, you know, in my view, it's one of the problems with affirmative action. Um, there are so many brilliant black people uh, and we have so many heroes for a black person to get up and challenge Black Lives Matter and Democrat racism takes enormous courage. And we see black Americans stepping forward every day uh, to run for office and to, and to do that um, I, I, and to advance America's cause like Senator Cotton. Um, and Vernon Jones, uh, you know, I could go on and on, Burgess Owens. Um, but we have to do that as well. We have to challenge them. Not, you know, when they're racists, you have to call them racists, not liberals. They're racists. They're doling out money on the basis of skin color. They turn a blind eye uh, when there's a black person involved in one. They don't you know, the rules become racist. I mean, the, what's happening to this runner in the Olympics, Richardson, you know, it's very sad. Her mother died. She uh, used marijuana to sort of ease her pain, but um, she tested positive. And the rules clearly state that you can't do that. And she knew it. And she's been very good. She's apologized for it. But you have racists like Joy Ann Reed saying, she was singled out because she was a black athlete, which is absurd. In any case, I, I hope you will consider in particular um, this message of mine that you have to be tougher in your language um, uh, in, describing, in describing the left. They're not liberals, they're vindictive bigots they're pursuing religious being. They're going to outlaw religion in this country. Um, the Equality Act uh, will make it illegal for Catholic hospitals not to give abortions, uh, not to give, uh, you know, perform mastectomies on 14 year olds because of this ludicrous theory of gender fluidity, um, all enforced by the state. Uh, there's no greater freedom that we have than freedom of conscience, religious freedom, uh, because it's the basis of all our other freedoms. But along with that is, what is a virtue that we have to have, and that virtue is courage. Without courage, all of our freedoms are vulnerable. Thank you. I want to take questions if, if there are any. Well. David, thank you so much. Many years ago, a friend of mine named Bill Rusher, who was published for many years of, of National Review, we were talking, and we weren't talking specifically about you, but we were talking about people who had been on the left and to come around and been effective for conservative principles. And he looked at me and he said, Morton, you must remember that the church makes provision for late vocations. <laughs> let, let, let me s t tell you that you have a vocation to uh, defend what is good and, and wholesome and productive in our society. And you, you've done it uh, magnificently. I want to uh, commend to everybody uh, this this excellent book of yours, your, your current book, it's superb, The Enemy Within. I suggest that you get out at everybody here, buy a few extra copies, pass it out to folks, because you will learn a lot uh, from Dave Harwood's book. Dave, I'm happy to tell you uh, that we're going to send you an Adam Smith tie in the mail. Uh, All right. I, I'm going to turn this over uh to Stephen Rowe. Steve Stephen is the the director of digital training here at the Leadership Institute. He's been tracking the questions uh that, that have come on. There are a number of questions and so I will turn this event uh, uh over to Stephen and uh, he'll uh, share questions that came in from participants at this breakfast. Thank you again David. 
Yes, and, and thank you, Morton. And, and Mr. Horowitz, you had a fantastic speech. And there are several questions in the Q&A. And I know you have a hard stop at 12. So we're going to get as many as we can. But just wanted to say that to the audience who's listening. So I'm going to go in order. And Betty uh, was the first one. Betty Lorino. Uh, she says, colleges are rampant with wokeness and cancel culture. This philosophy has rained down onto secondary and elementary schools. Loudoun County in Virginia is fighting back. But this must be done throughout the nation. What can we do who love America? Uh, John Adams warned us about the elites who would take over, and this has happened. Yeah, the left controls the language. So they call themselves progressives and liberals. They're certainly not liberal. And they're arch reactionaries, since they're operating from uh, theories by a crackpot named Karl Marx um, that are over 150 years old, almost 200 years old by now. Um, our university, the, the, the universities aren't woke, they're asleep. Um, but that said, I think uh, my main message on fighting back, aside from the use of stronger la language that's more accurate to what they're actually, who they actually are, um, is this uh, great gift that Donald Trump, who by the way, before he ran for office, was pretty much an actual liberal. Um, he, he certainly gave most of his donations to the Democrat party which was a little better in, the, in those days. Um, so he's the second thoughter like myself. Um, but he has given a great gift to conservatives. He has created the first conservative mass movement in my lifetime. When I came into the right 40 years ago, I looked around, the first thing I said was, where's the ground army? There's all these leftist organizations, issue organizations, what have you harassing politicians, calling them names, embarrassing them in public, attacking them. Obama did this before he was elected. Uh, that's what community organizer is. He was, um, uh, and until they got on the leftist program, they did the same thing to corporate executives uh, who are not brave people. But there was nothing on the right. Why, why aren't there sit-ins at Twitter headquarters and, uh, and Facebook headquarters making their lives miserable? I mean, don't be leftist, don't be destructive, but they don't wanna see a demonstration with signs and people shouting at them at their headquarters. Um, and actually it's already happening. We see it in this revolt in the schools. I, I wrote five books about the schools and how they were taken over by America hating leftists. Um, and really got uh, virtually no reaction from them. Uh, but now people are, are beginning to try to find out what their kids are being taught or indoctrinated in and objecting to it. And they're very eloquent. It's, it's really refreshing to see it. So the way to fight back is at every level, you have to fight the political battle wherever it appears. Um, and you know, keep in mind, that Trump probably won 80 million votes, but he certainly won 75 million. That's a lot of Americans, people. We, we're, we can win this if we can mobilize the people. Most Americans are gonna be patriots. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and the next question comes from Timothy Ramsey, who asked, isn't this race issue initiated by the communists, as G. Edward Griffin claimed many years ago? Yeah, the communists, the Democrat Party is a communist party. Who do you think Presley and Omar and AOC are? I mean, the, you know, if you want to give me an example of where they're not communists, what issue? What attitude they have. That's not communist. The Democrat Party is a communist party these days. And there is a communist party, but it, it's sort of drowned in this. There's a, a, a rather big one called Democrat Socialists of America. Of course, that's a, uh, an oxymoron, democratic. So socialism is tyranny. Socialism is a system which takes from people who work hard and achieve and earn 
and gives it to people who don't want to work and can't achieve. Yeah, absolutely. And but it is. Yeah, complete, completely agree. And That's why Margaret Thatcher said it works until they run out of other people's money. <laughs> the Iron Lady, what a wise woman uh, and a role model for so many. Um, the, the next question is an anonymous question, but this person really uh, very excited. Uh, and Mr. Horowitz, everything you said or commented on, I agree with. As a recently retired medical sales rep with a history degree, other than just writing a check, how can I directly impact America's youth? Well, I think you, you need to find ways to inform the people around you of what's going on. Um, I, 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 you know, it's very dispiriting often to watch uh, conservative TV shows, uh, the news shows, because they don't confront them uh, in the way they need to be confronted. Occasionally it happens. Uh, you know, Tucker Carlson is very good. Some of the Newsmax people are very effective. Um, I don't, I can't get OAN on my, my set. Uh, but telling it like it is, people need information. That's why I wrote this book, The Enemy Within. There's a ton of information about the race issue, for example, and American history and what the Democrats have done. Um, you know, by siding with the Chinese during the virus epidemic, they show they're traitors. Now, you know, you gotta shape your language so it's aggressive, but it doesn't get you people just shutting their ears to you. Now, I, I have certain credentials because I spent so many years in the left, so I feel that I have to blurt it out. I mean, they are traitors. Uh, they are betraying this country constantly. Just, just the border issue. And they're unbelievable hypocrites and liars. I mean, you know, they got all exercised about kids who were put in Obama cages at the, at the border. Trump spent four years undoing what Obama and, and the left had done to our immigration that caused these families to be separated. They called him all kinds of horrific names, said he was a monster and so forth. Now there's 10 or 100 times as many lost kids being infected with the virus, being raped, and abused, like getting lost in a strange country. Um, and they, they don't care. Kamala Harris doesn't care. She, she, they don't go to the border and look at the problem, but they have no solutions. And the reason is, as I say, the ends justify the means. They think these are future votes for the Democrat Party. It's disgusting what, they, what, what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And just for the sake of time, we just have enough time for just one more question and we're going to sneak it in. And I apologize to everyone's questions I didn't get to. I, I apologize for talking too long, but go ahead. Well, you know, uh, these are good sentences. So, you know, please continue. But uh, yeah, there was well over 25 questions here. So I just couldn't get to everyone. I was only able to ask three. And I'm going to finish with this one. We've got a dynamic duo, Craig and Deborah Galloway, who ask if it is necessary to use strong language against the left, does this also undermine democracy or do we have to use such hard hitting language for only a time in a battle while we're looking for a time to return to better discourse? That's an, an excellent question. I, I think if you distinguish, look, there are, there are, are actual liberals. I mean, there are only a handful, but you know, Alan Dershowitz, Jonathan Turley, uh, you know, are two examples of people who are liberal. Um, and, and you can say that and defend them. Uh, you don't do it on the basis of uh, skin color. You don't do it on the basis of the mere fact that they're Democrats. You look at their actions and hold them accountable. Uh, and I think, you know, saying that, you know, Joe Biden, well, I, 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 he isn't even president, whatever. But the Biden administration is a racist administration and, and is an anti-American administration is perfectly legitimate within a democracy. Because there's plenty of other Democrats. Why aren't the other Democrats stepping forward and protesting this? You gotta shame them. And in fact, 
some people who, uh, you know, um, have been pretty nasty towards conservatives like Bill Maher are now take, pummeling the Democrats um, for their hypocrisies and, uh, and, you know, attacks on free speech and so forth. So I, I, I think you handle this by showing that you're, you know, that with the Democrats, their nature, find me the Democrat that doesn't say that Trump is a racist. <laughs> That's a very fair point. I, I don't think you, you have to look long and hard to find one of those. Um, well, thank you so much for, for taking the time to speak at this Wednesday Lincoln Club breakfast. I know I enjoyed it. And I know a lot of under, in, individuals did as well. Just so many awesome questions that came in. And again, sorry, we couldn't get to all of them, but just have to respect. Yeah, people can try. I, I get a lot of tweets, but my Twitter feed is at Horowitz39. And if I, if I see your tweet, um, in my notifications, I'll try to answer it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And uh, yes, um, that is all the time we have for questions and answers at this time. And uh, just want to thank uh, David Horowitz for speaking here again. And uh, I want to pass this um, back off to, to Morton for just a second to announce the next Wednesday Wake Club Breakfast. Thanks. This was, this was certainly a great presentation. I'm glad we were able to present it. Please join us on August 4th for our next virtual Wednesday Wake Up Club Breakfast at the Leadership Institute. And I encourage you to RSVP online at leadershipinstitute.org slash breakfast. Thank you.